Okay, so right around Christmas of last year, I did a full Let's Play of Monsanto World. It was more of a nostalgic trip for me, but there were some things that really stuck out to me while playing it. And one of those things is surprisingly, the handler. I don't know if I've got some sort of illness that only I have, or if my sense for any decency or respectability has completely been destroyed after the pandemic, but I'm sorry, I absolutely love this fucking goofball. I mean look at her, every time she endangers the player to unknowingly luring in a new form of danger, or simply stinking up any cutscene that she's in, it's a form of endearment that you only get if you see a physically challenged animal. You just can't help but feel sorry for her. Somewhere down the line, I will try and do a separate video dedicated to why I like the handler. I know, genuinely, what is wrong with me. But don't worry, I will try to explain myself in detail. But for now, this small discussion video will be dedicated to a separate topic. Or rather, two topics. Now, I'm actually going to credit the YouTuber Heavywings for this. He is a content creator that makes very well-made Monsanto related videos and I highly recommend watching him as he is one of my inspirations for doing these types of videos. On Twitter, he states how this half-witted, gormless danger to both you, the hunter, and to society does actually bear some similarities to another NPC that follows you around. Genuinely, the definition of yin and yang, you really can't bring up a perfect example of two extremes. Here, we have a literal child that would throw a temper tantrum if you can't find a person that she literally just met a few moments ago, only to find out that said person is safe. Again, absolute goofball. And here we get an NPC that I kid you not, and yes, this is a small spoiler to the ending of the storyline, so please skip this if you hadn't reached that point yet, becomes a goddamn dragonator during the fight with Geismagorn. You know how most Elder Dragon fights in Monsanto has the obligatory dragonator scene? Well, Sunbreak doesn't even have that. Instead, it has Fiorain. Hell, throughout most of the fight with both Geisma and Malzino, she does nothing but deal damage and chats so much shit to the monsters. Every urgent quest and follower quest that you do that involves Fiorain, you've essentially got an extra weapon with you. And the good news is that weapon can't even get carted. And plus Fiorain gives out some badass introductions to some of the new monsters in Sunbreak. I absolutely love the way she introduces Malzino during his cutscene at the start of his fight. And with the handler... Well, you know... There we go. What do you mean we can do it? I'm the only one here. How about you come down over here, grab a weapon and help me? Now alright, I know straight from the start of this video that obviously this is not a fair comparison between the two characters. One is a partner to the player that is essentially a mobile quest giver. Wherever you go on a quest or at an expedition to any of the maps, she's right there with you in every camp. And to be quite fair, she isn't entirely useless. World is the first game in the franchise that lets you eat a meal in a camp on any given area, so she can do that. And because she acts as more of a researcher than a hunter, you can't really expect her to do much in quests. Unlike Fiorain or any other NPC that can join you in follower missions, they can lay traps, actually help you place bombs when a monster is sleeping, and more importantly, with and ride any monster in the area to come help you. The poor handler can't fight, obviously she can't die, but by no means is she a badass. Bloody hell, try comparing her to even your Mogi, the little girl that cooks dangos for you. I went back and watched my fight with the Ibushi and I genuinely forgot that an actual child was contributing in a fight with an Elder Dragon. I'm sorry, but if this child can pull up in a rampage and absolutely fuck things up with a heavy bowgun, then the handler has no excuses. Now I guess I should move on because this whole comparison thing is just ridiculous. I mean, the handler is literally getting showed up by a kid, so we should go over to the next point. 
and that is the general idea of NPCs following you and actually contributing you in whatever quests you are on. Like what Heavy Wings said on Twitter, this whole follower system should really be taken into consideration for future installments in the series. Basically, instead of putting in more resources and effort into overly dramatic and dragged out cutscenes, simply add a character that's relevant to a specific quest, add bits of dialogue, then add a quick cutscene at the end, and as long as that NPC actually contributes to the mission, then it's a hell of a better experience all around, to a particular storyline. Now honestly, it does sound like what I'm asking for is another companion like a Palico, but to be fair, this method of using NPCs as a companion like the Palicos is a way better path in introducing and showcasing different characters to me than any cutscene would. It doesn't even have to be something that happens often. Have them appear in only key quests and urgents, just like with Furane. And I'm gonna be truthful here and say that when this particular character got introduced, I genuinely didn't think much of her, but just another new character to the expansion. And wouldn't you know, Having her join me in a fight with the Free Lords and the final boss for Sunbreak has actually made me like her more as a character. If she was giving the world treatment however, have her just appear in scripted cutscenes after I fought the Free Lords, trust and believe I would have forgotten for your reign in a week. The whole follower system got introduced fairly appropriately, as I always thought of Monster Hunter Rise as one of the most experimental games in the franchise, and with everything that's been introduced in this game, I actually wouldn't mind if this system would come back in a future Monster Hunter game. As stated, you don't even need to bring the whole system back, have one or two characters that are new to the player join them in only key quests or urgents, that's important to the storyline, show off their personality and abilities through contributing and helping the hunter, and I guarantee you whatever storyline that the devs will come up with will be infinitely better and more memorable. Plus it gives that much needed character development that we rarely get to see in this series, Granted, there really isn't much of that given the nature of Monsanto, but it does something new to the series in terms of storytelling and fleshing out the characters that you meet in a particular game. One of the main problems that I ended up encountering during my playthrough of World are that some of the cutscenes that are meant to be taken as suspenseful or dramatic really didn't do their job in keeping me engaged in what's happening. I don't know if it's just the dialogue not catching my attention, or that some of the characters in a particular cutscene aren't really that important to me to care enough if something happens to them, but this problem also happened to me in Iceborne. I generally think that a case of showing off less would help these problems out, cut down the cutscenes a little bit, and implementing more interactive gimmicks like the follower system would in my opinion actually improve the overall experience of a storyline. And that's been it. Please do not leave yourself out of this little discussion video. Leave your opinions in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like at the end, and I shall see you later.